Hello everybody, today I'm going to present a very interesting problem I found as I was searching through some uh, problems I could give my students to solve and this problem is XOR Pyramid from CSS It's an interesting problem which might make you think of the various solutions which are complicated but you will see throughout this video that the solution this problem has is actually very simple and it doesn't rely on too many complications so let's begin in this problem we are given XOR pyramid where each number is XOR of lower left and lower right numbers and here is an example pyramid and we can see that if we start from 2 10 we get 8 15 9 and so on and we will keep going all the way up until we will find the top of the pyramid and this is the number we need to print and we are given the bottom row of the pyramid and we need to print the topmost number we have around uh, 200,000 numbers and each number is up to 10 to the 9 and our goal is to find this number. Now how do we proceed? First off we can't construct the entire pyramid because uh, the size of the pyramid is far too big. Maybe if, it, if n was up to something like 1000 or 2000 we could have done that but given that n is up to 200,000 this is by no means possible. So we need to think of this problem differently. Now, when it comes to problems which rely on bitwise operators, there are certain things we can have in mind. For example, we can think of each bit uh, independently because uh, bits don't overlap with each other since we are talking about bitwise XOR. But also we can think of uh, other similar ideas where we can use the properties of the bitwise operations. Now, a very important property bitwise XOR has is that if we XOR a number twice, it will cancel itself out. So if we do something like 5 XOR 5, it's going to be 0. And this property you will see throughout the problem that it will be very important in our path to, towards solving this problem. Now, let's, let's think of the same problem if we were to have had a sum. And let's analyze a bit what contribution each number has to the answer. Because if we find the contribution each number has to the answer, we can figure out what the final number here. So if we were to have had, let's say, a smaller pyramid. So let's say something like, I don't know, 5 times 5 maybe. Yeah, so this one wasn't all that great. But uh, so let's make it like three i will compromise and make it something like four and here five and i will draw the uh, top two uh, shortly and then the top one excuse my rather poor drawing i i will fix it now as you can see so now we got uh, this drawing which has a size of three and now that we have this pyramid drawn, now let's think at how many times would each number contribute to the answer depending on the place we start. Let's say we had sum. So right now we are working with a normal sum, not with XOR sum. So let's say that we have here 1. For simplicity, we can always multiply by whatever number we have. So now this one, so this one would show up as part according to here it would show up as the previous in the previous number and in the current number so we would have one here and one here now for each of these we would have one here this one would be touched by both sides so we have two and one again now again one two is uh, one and two is uh, three and also three and 3 plus 3 is 6. So we can observe that if we were to have had a number here, it would show up 6 times, which is an even number. Now, so for this number here, we have 6. For the numbers at the edge, it's obvious that it's 1. And if we were to do it for something here, we would have 1, 1, 2, 1, then 3, 1, and 4. So again, we can observe that we have 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. 
And this is for a normal sum, but because XOR behaves in the same way, the contribution amount will be the same. Now, what does this resemble you to? If, you, if you've seen at least one or two combinatorics problems, you might start thinking at Pascal's triangle. So for simplicity, I will uh, start writing down the Pascal's triangle and you will see that uh, the amounts here are equivalent to the amounts in the Pascal triangle. So Pascal triangle is a triangle which is used uh, to compute the various combinatoric sums and the number on row i and the column j is equivalent to and cho i choose j. i choose j, which can be written depending on where you're from, as either this, like the way it's written in my own country, or I've also seen something like uh, this, where, we, where they write it like this, and so on. Or even notations like i choose j. So again, there are many notations, but the concept is the same. Now, how do we use this in order to come back to our problem where we need to find the XORs? Now, because of this really important property I mentioned earlier with the XOR operation, namely that if a number shows up an even number of times, it will cancel out. We can use the same approach for the uh, bottom row we are currently computing to. And the reason why this is so important is because now if we can find fast enough which numbers are odd and which numbers are even, all we have to do is to compute the XOR of the numbers with an odd value here. So for this example, we would only have to compute these values, uh, the XOR of whatever values we have there, and that would be the final answer. Now, how do we do this? Because if we were to compute the actual combinatorial values, it would be quite complicated. And we can't compute everything, as I said, using brute force because this isn't going to work. So we need to reduce the problem to something more simple. Because when it comes to XOR, we only care about parity. Let's go back to the formula for I choose J or N choose K. So the formula would be for N choose K, something like N factorial, which is divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial. So again, this is a very well-known formula, at least if you've solved one or two combinatorics problems. And uh, now, how do we use this? So because we only care about parity, let's only think about how to find out the exponent at which two shows up in n factorial, k factorial, and n minus k factorial. And in order to find the exponent at which two shows up in n factorial. So let's see, let's uh, say we have something like ex of n, how many times two shows up in the representation of uh, n factorial. It's obvious that we will start from ex of n minus one, plus I will name it f of n. And how do we compute this f of n, which means how many times two shows up? It's basically the power at which two shows up in the prime factorization and f of n can be computed recursively very, in a very simple manner as zero if n is odd, otherwise one plus f of n over two if n is even. So again, we have this function which can be computed without too much trouble. Now. How do we use this in order to deduce the parity of some combinatorial sum? If we think at mod 2, this is equivalent to finding whether ex of n minus ex of k minus ex of n minus k is greater than 0 or not. And the reason why this happens is because if we were to have written this as an actual fraction with all of the powers, we could simplify whatever exponent n factor 2 shows up in n factorial with the exponents we have here. We know that this one will always be greater or equal than the sum of these two. Now we just need to know if it's greater or not, which is simple to find. If the sum is greater than 0, then of course we have a factor of 2 there. Otherwise we don't. So again, it's uh, a sum which is very important uh, 
to know and uh, these combinatorial properties as you will see when I will show you the solution in a couple of seconds they made the implementation process much easier so in order to recap we will rely on the fa that fact that that XOR is an irreversible operation and when we XOR a number with itself it cancels out this means that we only need to find out how many times each number shows up in the contribution to the final sum to the final XOR sum we observe that the contribution is given by the combinatorial sum which for our array would be something like n minus 1 choose the position we are currently at the position being zero index and we only need to find if this is odd or even and we can find it pre-computing the exponent at which uh, n factorial or any factorial shows up at and with that being said let me show you also the code so as you see here again uh, I am reading uh, n, I am pre-computing for all numbers from 2 to n the exponent at which uh, 2 shows up in the factorial. I do this while loop to find how many times I can divide x by 2, x being i at first. And then when I read this value, I just compute this uh, relation where I rely on the formula I previously computed. And if this is 0, then we XOR with our answer. So we find in the end the answer and this is how we can use a bit of combinatorics to reduce the solution to a really complicated problem to just a few lines of code which can be doable in 5 minutes. And this is also a good way to apply both bitwise operations but also some combinatorics knowledge. If you, find, if you found the solution to the problem interesting and if you enjoyed watching this video please like the video, subscribe to the channel and Help me as I am uh, striving to reach more and more people as I want to do more educational videos in the future. In addition, if you want me to cover in more detailed topics such as combinatorics, number theory or other topics I mentioned here, please let me know in the comments or please private message me if you don't want your, to comment there so that I know that you want me to do this and I want you to be comfortable with whichever way you are telling me this. Until the next time, I wish you the best of luck in contest and in everything you're doing and see you in the next video. Cheers!